Liverpool won, Arsenal won in an exhilarating top of the table clash. Arsenal remain top for the festive period. They grow a six point gap over still favourites with the bookmakers, Manchester City, a one point gap over Liverpool today. And I have to say, as a neutral watching this game, it was absolutely top, top class it was absolutely top top class indeed the overarching performance from both sides i'm sure their own fans are going to pull on some bad bits and i get why we're always critical of ourselves but what a high quality game and the only element of you know in the preview i spoke about the game i thought the first 10 minutes would be cagey and then it would become a basketball game because arsenal got that early goal it became end to end very, very quickly, both sides trying to win the game. And I think in the end, Arsenal will walk away the happier side. Getting a point away at Anfield is a is a good achievement, especially when it comes to being in these title races. This nonsense that if Arsenal didn't win today, it meant they won't win the Premier League is it's been one of the biggest sort of overstatements I've heard. Equally, people calling out Mo Salah. Mo Salah's finished. Mo Salah's passed his best. What a goal from him today to ensure that Liverpool Football Club walk away with something from this game. And maybe, just maybe, they should have won it with that five-on-one squared to Trent Alexander-Arnold. How did he not score? We'll be breaking that down today on the Full Fan Highlight Show. Make sure like buttons are smashed, by the way. Make sure you are subscribing to the Football Terrace as well. And, of course, it's a big question to delve into. Were Liverpool robbed? Were they robbed today? Should this have been a penalty from a handball from Martin Odegaard? He slips. He puts his left hand on the ball, knocks it out of the path of Mohamed Salah. And Liverpool fans everywhere fuming, absolutely fuming that this decision was not given and did not go their way. And I understand it. I absolutely understand it because for me, I know people think I'm a secret Arsenal fan, but I don't understand why that's not handball. I don't understand how in God's great name that was not given. In in real time, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, it's a pen. In slow motion with the replays, I, I thought it was an absolute stone waller. What I will say to Liverpool fans is, where was your energy last week when Delo was the first player ever sent off for two pieces of dissent? None of you came out and defended Man United. Remember, keep the same energy, please, especially here on the terrace, as I do, because I thought that was a shocker from the referee today. I really, really did. So a penalty should have been awarded there. But overall, what a spectacle. What a game. And I I think the negatives, I would say, for both sides, Liverpool really didn't create enough clear-cut chances and opportunities at home again. And I think uh, not really forcing David Raya into making saves will frustrate them. The front line, barring Salah, really didn't get going today. I think from an Arsenal point of view, there's just one name that I think is going to be a big negative for him today. And that is Zinchenko. Zinchenko at left back defended so poorly at times, gave away possession in certain places more often than he should have been. Thought we had a real disaster of a game today overall. But I thought both teams had so many positives. Mo Salah for Liverpool, William Saliba for Arsenal. And my overarching thought about this game was both teams demonstrated today that they can be champions. Both teams demonstrated today that they have the capability of winning the English Premier League in 2023 24. 110% in my humble opinion. Two of the best teams, not just in England, two of the best teams in Europe today, demonstrating to us the high qualities of the English Premier League. And of course, there's mistakes. But if you, you, you're telling me you don't watch football if you think that mistakes uh, are not part of the elite level of the game. I want to get, get your views. I want to get your opinions. Who is this result best for? Some may say Manchester City because neither pulled further away from them. They sit fifth in the league right now. I know, of course, they've got a game in hand, but you must win it. Arsenal fans, are you happy with a point? Sir Alex Ferguson used to say that beat your rivals at home, draw with them away, and you'll become champion. Does that still make sense in 2023? Liverpool fans, two home games now without a win. A little bit, 
a little bit impotent still in terms of the attack, not putting chances away, final balls not quite being good enough. Where are the elements that you see your teams needing to improve on? Let us know in the live comment section. Let us know in the super chats as well. But for me, I'll repeat it again for the third time. What a game. I enjoyed it thoroughly from start to finish. And I actually think a 1-1 draw, I'd have liked more goals, but I think a draw was a very, very fair result indeed. Let's go to some of these super chats that are coming in here. Why, Trent? Why? Uh, that was the W there. Injuries. Yeah, look, Trent's miss. Trent's miss was crazy. It really was. I, I actually can't believe, even now, just thinking back, it was so simplistic. Put it in the back of the net. Bang, goal. Finished. Uh, Arsenal cheats. Man City bowed out. Easy fourth uh, Premier League title. Well, I don't think it's an easy fourth Premier League title. And how did Arsenal cheat? I will defend Arsenal here in the same way as I've defended all the other teams. This is not Arsenal's fault that the, the handball wasn't given. So attacking Arsenal is hurting football as opposed to trying to fix it. Uh, we'll take the point. Thanks, Trent. Come on, you gooners, is what uh, Classified says here. Uh, Rice and Saliba, great game. Zinni is a liability. Yeah, Rice today, 100 million pound player all over. Saliba, listen, he's going to be as good as Van Dijk was at his best. Saliba is going to be as good. There is nothing he can't do. He's absolutely sensational. And Zinchenko, look, I understand he's so important for the style of play. But it, it, if it wasn't for his fellow defenders or Declan Rice basically getting him out of drow, he could have cost Arsenal two or three more goals today. I agree. Uh, Declan, man of the match. This guy is crazy. Yeah, I thought Declan Rice was absolutely phenomenal today. Do you know, I want to shout out the other DM as well, though. I thought Endo, considering he got booked as well, I thought he had a really good game. He's been off the pace in the Premier lot this year. But I thought Endo was very good. Both DMs for both sides had very, very good games today. A clear robbery, Odegaard handball. Every Liverpool player played uh, for that badge uh, on their hearts. Um, Soboslai, Konate, Endo, an immaculate performance by Liverpool. We deserve to win this. Robbed is what Loudmouth Football says. Listen, I th the players you mentioned, I thought all were very, very good. You were definitely robbed of the opportunity of that penalty. There's no doubt. And your players did fight. And that's why I think you guys can be champions. Uh, better than last week. Disappointed not to win, but happy with the performance. Will be a concern when Salah is gone to AFCON, though. Others need to step up. Uh, Daniel, I think you're spot on there. And again, Lee Gunner, he, he angered them football gods. He shouldn't have said Mo Salah was finished. Shouldn't have done it. Powder dry. Uh, he's always going to score today. Uh, as a neutral, this was a beautiful game of football end to end. However, Liverpool bottled going uh, on top with a five on one. It's an interesting take, and I think it holds some water there. As much as they were robbed, that chance there it should have been a goal. Uh, Arsenal fan here, that's a penalty. I'd be fuming. Do you know what? Fair play to you, Tony, as a gooner, for not being sensitive and calling that out. We very rarely hear from the opponents who benefit from a bad VAR decision calling it out. Well done, you, for being a football person. Uh, instead of focusing on Rob, focus on Trent Alexander-Arnold's miss. Both are going to come up in conversation. I think excluding either is ridiculous, personally. Uh, slipped and a pen, no chance. Listen, it's a fair point. It's a fair point, Mad Hatter. We're going to have that debate when the panel comes out. Uh, with their fans on their side, they did nothing. The Emirates will respond wildly. Not a pen uh, uh, on Odegaard because his knee slipped. Same as Kai's penalty claim. Yeah, like, I thought Kai's penalty... Kai's The one on Kai Havertz was a foul but it's not a penalty. And we haven't seen very many penalties given for very small, slight nudges. And they've made a point of saying that. So I'm glad they didn't give it because it would go against the protocols and the standards they have set. Uh, we paid the refs and they always give us uh, the pens and 50-50s. It's true. Uh, we should have won the game. Liverpool got lucky, is what Alex sarcastically says here. Uh, Salah deserved two yellows in a row, just like last week, stopping an attack and kicking the ball away. I did, again, this is what I would also say. I called that out in the game. There was a moment where Van Dyke literally said to the ref, are you mad? Have you been drinking? Didn't get booked. That's the scent. And then Mo Salah booked for the foul and not booked for kicking it away. We all knew, what I will say is this though. 
they haven't come out and even apologized for the the, the, the the low thing. We know it was a mistake. The fact we all know it was a mistake means I don't want to see it more. I just don't want to see it happen again. Uh, if Anfield wasn't a slip and slide, maybe it's a pen. Fair point, Kenny boy. Uh, uh, penalty on Odegaard for Liverpool and one on Havertz. Well, that's, you think both were pens and neither were given. I suppose that makes it fair to a degree. Uh, Saliba was a matador. Point away keeps us top. Listen, City have won this in the, in the last, in the Pep era where he's won Premier Leagues. He has lost to Anfield in a number of those seasons and got draws there. Seldom won. So again, Arsenal fans do not be triggered by Arteta haters and Arsenal haters who now say there's no way you can win the league drawing away at Liverpool. It is the most nonsensical piece of BS anybody could throw at your club. I would ignore anybody that says it. It's crazy talk. Crazy talk. Uh, four in a row. Load. That's a pen. Liverpool robbed is what Thanos City has got to say. Thank you, bro. Uh, how many times are we going to get robbed? And also, how in the, the world did Saka stay on the field? The referee supposed to... Uh, supposed to dress uh, in an Arsenal jersey. Arsenal can't win the league, like Jose said. City 51, Liverpool 49. Uh, look, I, I will say this. I don't think Saka's was a second yellow. He won the ball but slipped. Uh, and I, don't, I just don't think players should be sent off for that personally. Um, I'd take a draw before the game. Two excellent teams. Uh, Deckers, Saliba and Gabriel, immense. You're bang on, Kelly. Absolutely right. Can Arsenal beat, even beat West Ham? You're hyping Arsenal again. I think both these teams today could win the Premier League. Could win the Premier League. Neither of my favourites, but could win the Premier League. Uh, I'm disappointed with the draw. We had better chances. Our attack is horrid. Um, X, <laughs> X for Welbs. Uh, forget the DM in January. Been an attacker and get a new one, is what Sarim has got to say here. Uh, if players is falling down, it is not a penalty. That is the rules. That's the rules, and I stand corrected. That's the rules, and I stand corrected. Uh, Kanate played like a beast. Kanate was really good today. And no, I don't think Saka should have been sent off. Kanate was he was absolutely immense. There's a few times where he absolutely little broed uh, Gabriel Jesus and just nudged him out of the way. And Gabriel was not exactly small or tiny. Kanate was better than Saliba today. Crazy. I thought they were both immense, to be fair. Uh, that penalty shouts uh, early in the first half, uh, not a robbery, is what G. Pratt says here. Uh, Zinchenko bench the bench player when Timber returns. He may be. He may be. What a game. Arsenal did what they needed to. Thank you for the point. Liverpool, impressed by Liverpool. Uh, it will be a nail-biting title race. Uh, it will be. Uh, Terry, please talk about Odegaard running the game. I know there are agendas, but people keep need to keep it real. Odegaard made one mistake in the game in the second half where he made a turn inside and lost the ball. But I thought Odegaard stepped up today. I thought Odegaard had a, a very good performance considering where you're at and who you're playing against. And the irony is, some will say, well, what did he do? And they'll talk about stats. Yet there are games where he scores or assists and people say, what was the performance like? I think Odegaard had a, a good game today. I would, would I say it was up there with Declan Rice, up there with Saliba, up there with Kanate, Salah? No. I think he was in the next category down. But I thought he had a very good game today. Seven and a half out of ten along those lines, Enigma, I would personally say. By the letter of the law, it's not a pen. Odegaard lost his balance and put his hands in a natural position. Did we all forget the rules? It, I get you. It still felt to me like he scaped, scraped the ball out of the way. And maybe he did it by accident. I feel very hard done by if my team didn't get that pen. There was a number of penalties last year that were exactly like that, that I called out and felt Man United should have got. So I'm And one for Chelsea as well. So I'm going to stand by that and not be a hypocrite. But if that's the letter of the law, someone wants to share it to me, then I'll change my mind maybe. Uh, Saka should be have been sent off too. I, I disagree with that one, bro. Uh, Anfield pitch was poor. Saliba and Rice were immense. Liverpool players injured themselves, fouling us, is what D Cunningham says here. Thank you, D. Uh, Liverpool robbed three times today. Clear penalty. Second yellows for Saka and Havarts for diving. Havarts didn't dive. He was pushed in the back. Uh, this is coming from a City fan. Uh, it evens itself out after calls of Arsenal have had. Either way, both clubs have shown some respect to each other over the last 18 months. Listen, both teams are title contenders without a doubt. 
Uh, Martinelli was absolutely awful today, but we take the point and keep it moving. I do agree. I think Martinelli had another poor showing today. Very rarely beat his man. Balls into the box, not good enough. There was a time where a ball was played across the six-yard box. Should be making runs, you know, runs to that back post. Isn't doing it. Not very good at all. So I agree. I agree. Uh, will the same Arsenal fans from two weeks ago come on and claim that they are there is a conspiracy against Liverpool? Oh no, that's the break. Uh, that breaks the confirmation bias. Good point. I don't think it's a conspiracy against Arsenal per se. They've definitely been robbed though. Uh, Arsenal fan pitch was substandard. It wouldn't. It would have. It would have been unlucky with the slip, but it should have been a penalty. Is what Marti, Marnitz has got to say here. Arsenal slipped all over the pitch. Liverpool didn't. Hmm. Uh, only disgraceful thing is the quality of Liverpool's pitch. A lot of people calling out the pitch. Maybe I weren't focusing on that. Uh, Arsenal players all win gold medals for diving. Tactics of a desperate team. Stinky is what Phil's got to say here. And City will do an undertaker again and steal the title. Maybe there's six points off of the top. We're going to bring the panel out now to have their say, ladies and gentlemen. Talking points are going to be, of course, that penalty for Arsenal. Sorry, that penalty that Arsenal could have conceded and Liverpool could have got. We are going to talk about Saliba and Konate and their performances today. We're going to look at Mohamed Salah as well. Talk about him. Is he finished? As people were claiming last week. And of course, then we're going to get people's opinions on where their teams need to improve. So we're going to go in that order as opposed to hearing everybody's individual match reviews. Um, I don't want to repeat too much stuff and we'll kind of go into it from that direction. Make sure like buttons are hit. More super chats to come later on the show as well. Uh, on the show today, we've got Saad, we've got Souls, we've got Samuel, we've got True Gunner, we've got Matt. I'm sure more people will be joining us very soon as well. Welcome back, gents. Uh, congratulations on the draw. I don't know if it's the right thing to say, but well done for giving us a great game. Um, I want to go to Brandon first. Uh, was it, in your opinion, a penalty to Liverpool? Uh, I think so, Tell. I think you've seen them given throughout the season, throughout last season. I think we was very lucky to get away with it. Um, I know what people are saying about Odegaard being off balance and may, you know, maybe that factored into their decision at VAR, but when, when you look at consistency, that's where I think Liverpool fans can have an issue because whether it's a pen or whether it isn't a pen, I don't think anybody really knows what a penalty is these days. I mean, personally, when, when you look at one like that being given one week and then it's not being given the next week, I think it's more about the consistency of the officials more than it is, you know, is it a penalty, is it not a penalty? I think it would have been harsh, but at the same time, you know, when you look at and, and reflect on games that have happened, like I say, this season, previous seasons, where penalties like that have been given. You have to say that in this day and age, it probably was a penalty. But, you know, we got away with that one. And I know you don't want to delve into the game too much, uh, but I, I've, only, I've only got a, a short period of time. So, you know, for me, I think Arsenal started really well. First 10 minutes, 15 minutes is exactly the type of, you know, start you want away at Anfield. Uh, we're putting them under pressure, creating opportunities. We had a few half chances, which maybe we could have done better with. But for God's sake, Alexander Zinchenko, yeah, tried his hardest to allow Liverpool back into this game. Pathetic defending, you know. When you're up against Mo Salah, left foot, right? That guy has scored over 200 goals from the wing, predominantly on the left, uh, on the on his left foot, cutting inside. And you allow him to cut in so easily as well. It was pathetic. And he was pathetic all game. Martinelli was awful today. You know, and it's fine margins between these two teams. But there was three or four players for Arsenal today that really did let us down and didn't give us the performances that we know they're capable of. Ben White was another one. I, I couldn't understand why he was you know, standing off players when he was 1v1 so much and allowing them to cross it or, sh or shoot. You know, luckily, luckily it didn't cost us. And, and that 5v1, you know, um, maybe mm. Liverpool win the game. But I look at the two teams, Tell, and I don't think either of us are winning the league for the pure and simple reason is both teams um, have great quality, <laughs> have very good quality. But when you look at the amount of chances that we had, the amount of chances that they had today, and the just not finishing their chances, I think that is going to be 
the 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 sticking point for both Arsenal and Liverpool in in certain games like this. Like you've got to finish your chances, and I think that's where we'll come unstuck, and that's where you'll see maybe Manchester City come back into the fold again. So mm. yeah, that's my overall. I I hear you. I hear you on that. We'll, we'll get on to our performance soon. Um, Sam, you're a Liverpool fan. Do you feel hard done by by not getting that penalty, which could have been decisive in this close game? Um, you know me. I don't really talk about referee decisions. I, I feel like we we need to play well, well in the sense that we don't let allow referee decisions to affect us in a game. But if I'm looking at the the balance of it, I do think it sh- it should have been a penalty. I can see why they didn't give it, but I do believe that it should have been a penalty. Mainly because yes, um, he he did slip, but. If he slips and his hand is not in the way, Salah's actually gone through. He's 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 past him yeah, because he he slipped. But obviously, because mm. his hand is in the way, he, he's it, the the ball manages to um go out of Salah's way, and then um it's actually cleared the danger for Arsenal. So that in in that sense, I do believe it was a penalty. Um, again, when when looking at it, um, I've seen like in previous seasons people um actually getting it. And if it was, um, and I'm gonna have to be fair. If Arsenal had that same, I would have called it a penalty as well. I'm, I have to be fair. Mm. So um, as I forgot, I think his name is Brandon. Brandon, yeah, is that you? yeah. yeah. Brandon. I think he was right in saying like we don't know what a penalty is anymore. <laughs> like especially with the handball rule, um, it's it's quite here and there. So, but in my personal opinion, I do believe it was a penalty because if Zinchenko, so not Zinchenko, if Odegaard's hand wasn't there in the way, Salah would have been through uh, or past yeah. him. Yeah, no, I hear you on, I hear you on that. Souls, I mean, yourself as a gooner on, on the penalty decision, do you think you, you got lucky there? Or if he slips, he slips and that's that's in the rules. It should, it's not a pen. I mean, you would have know what the referees are like every single week we complain about them and we know they're they're not really that good at their jobs they're not competent enough to handle the especially these higher occasions and you know we've seen the Liverpool Spurs game with an absolute shambolic officials and again today in my opinion look I don't really know the rules that well to say if this was a definite penalty or not um if some people are saying if they're off balance then it comes down to is it clear and obvious and what interpretation the VAR have and what did the referees have and I think that's kind of what's ruining the game. It's not necessarily the rules, but it's how they're being interpreted and how they're being actually implemented in the game. I don't know if the referees or VAR or whoever controls it or even knows what's going on. They're too kind mm. of open to interpretation and they're too easily misunderstood. So unless there's like really defined rules, I don't think VAR can actually do anything in this situation because if, for example, people are saying it's if you're off balance, it can't be a penalty then that's how VAR saw it. He saw that, okay, Odegaard lost his balance, but then can you kind of do where you manipulate that, where you act as if you've lost balance just to kind of bring a hand into it in the future? But as long as they're being consistent, that's all we ask for. We, we're not asking for the decisions to be necessarily correct every single time, but at least for there to be a consistent pattern yeah. of seeing it. If off-balance handballs are now not given, then that's fine. I don't think a lot of people can complain because there's consistency in that. But if it becomes like, let's say tomorrow, like the Chelsea game, a similar situation happens and they go and give it, that's where people are going to have a bit more of an outcry. There can't be one game, yeah. one rule, another game, another rule. I, I suppose from a consistency point of view, the Man United Southampton last year, I don't remember the name of the defender, he fell over and it hit his arm and they didn't give it. That's the only... And also... Uh, West Ham Chelsea. Do you remember when Chelsea had a shot was on target and the player slips and hit his arm on the floor? Didn't give that. So suppose you could argue that three times I've seen this and three times it hasn't been given. So I mean, even though I thought all oh, three were penalties, but maybe that's just with the protocol, as you say. But as long as there's consistency, I suppose it's harder to to sort of complain about it in, in that regard. But viewers, let us know what you think. Should Liverpool have been given a penalty in this game? Leave your comments below. Make sure you're hitting like buttons and subscribing too. In terms of the performance today, I want to go to Saad first of all, because Arsenal started like a freight train. Liverpool then got back into it. It became like a basketball match, high quality game. Uh, what did you make of it? Are you happy? Are you disappointed? Are you taking that point with, with a, you know, with a, you know, you're away at Anfield. It's good for your title race. How, how are you reviewing it all? Um, To be honest, I, I'm just, 
the thing is, when it comes to a game at Anfield, even when you leave with a point, you're still going to be happy to some to some extent because let's face it, you're leaving there with a point. Um, <clears throat> but I still feel like we should, we had so many opportunities to get the three points. So many opportunities that we just faltered. There's so many opportunities that the ball was coming across the, across the box and we just needed somebody at the back post from Martinelli to have us just not getting in that back post. Like, as soon as as soon as Saka is running, I think there was one where Saka put it across. As soon as I see Saka running, even me, just I'm 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 just an amateur footballer, bro. I, I whenever I'm playing football, I know if my winger's running and he's running across uh, across the wing, I know I need to sprint to the box because he's gonna cross it. He's got two defenders on him. What is he gonna do? Try and take both of them on? No, he's not. He's gonna cross it. So you have to get into the box. So why people are not getting into the box is crazy for me, but. Overall, I think the performance, it was it was a back and forth, you know, uh, jabs from both teams. And uh, listen, it was it was a, a a game that was two of the two of the best teams in the league going at it. Um, Zinchenko is dis disappointing defensively. He's the Achilles heel of this team. Um, and right now I'm just praying, hoping I, I can't wait. To see Tom, uh, Tom Yasu and Timber's face, bro. I've never wanted to see two, two, two people just turn up out of nowhere in my life, bro. I'm praying that these guys come back as soon as possible because we need them. We need them just for their defensive ability. Because, uh, listen, for me, Zinchenko just can't handle it defensively. He's a midfielder. Let's just let's just leave it how it is. He is a midfielder. He is an eight. Yeah. Let's let's just put it out down on the table. He is a midfielder. He is not a defender. Simple as that. Martinelli, uh, Martin. This is just one of the worst games I've seen from Martinelli in a while. Just nerves, absolute nerves. He's just nervous on that pitch. Nervous. I've not seen him that nervous before. It just couldn't get past his man. Um, every time he's faltering the pass, running the ball out of play. I'm like, come on, man. You got to get a grip. This is this is this is the top of the top of the tree, bro. This is the big occasions that we need these players to stand up, and they need to 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 go out there and put a performance out. Yeah, I need you to put a performance out like Saliba did today, like Gabriel did today, like Declan Rice did today. Them three, them three, but even Odegaard. I'll, I'll even put Odegaard in that because Odegaard, I think, had an amazing game. This is exactly what I wanted from him. Drop deep. Get the ball from deep and bring it forward. Dictate the game. Dictate the tempo. It's so, is, is, this, is, it, is today an indication? You're you're one of the hardest grounds in the stadium. Sorry, one of the hardest stadiums in the in the country to win at. Was today the evidence that it's a striker that's needed in January more than a midfielder? Because a lot of Arsenal fans debate whether it's a midfielder or whether it's a striker that you need. For me, I think you dominated enough of the game against one of the best teams in the in the country. It was just a few times that that ball was put across that six-yard box and nobody has the instinct to make the runs. So if you're going to buy one player in January, does it have to be, as best you can find, a prolific striker? I think if you're looking at this game in isolation, for this game, we needed a striker. We needed a striker that was in the box. But from what I've seen during this season, we needed a midfielder, a left eight, a natural left eight more than we need a striker, in my personal opinion. No Brandon, way. Brandon, Brandon's no shaking way. His head. Brandon, hold on, hold on. We do need a natural uh, left eight. We do. We do. We need a box-to-box -box midfielder. A striker, of course, we can bring that in. But for us... We, I need somebody who can do the defensive work on that left side as well as do the uh, go forward and help out with the attack. I can't, I can't have somebody who, who who doesn't doesn't go back. Listen, I like Havertz and I think he had a decent game today, but he isn't a natural left eight. He just isn't. You need somebody on that left side that can do both jobs for me. I need that. Same way He's that been playing able to do it. over the last five games. Yeah, yeah I'm, not for, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, I'm not faltering Havertz. I'm not. I think he yeah. has been playing very good over the last Let me ask week. you a question. Do you rate Eddie and Ketia? No, not at all. Do you know he's our top goal scorer right now? Yes, I do. And you're Isn't telling me joy? we don't need a striker, bro? Are you sure? Isn't it joint top goal scorer? I Sorry? Think, I think that the more... Uh, joint top goal scorer. Well, yeah, exactly, but exactly. The, the point is, is we sit, we all sit here and we say week in, week out, we don't rate Eddie and Ketia, we need an upgrade on Eddie and Ketia. He's currently our top goal scorer. That tells you everything you need to know about our attack. 
Yeah, but he did um, bang three look, golden against Sheffield United. I know that. I know that. I know that. I know. But the point is, is we played 18 games. Saka, you know, Saka hasn't uh, scored more than Nketiah. Than Jesus hasn't scored more than Nketiah. Martinelli's not scoring more than Nketiah. And I know we share the goals around the pitch, but if we had that clinical striker who can guarantee you 15 to 20 goals a season, you see a totally different Arsenal team. I can guarantee you that. Because a lot of these chances that we are currently missing go in the back of the net and they're the difference between us winning a game and, and drawing or losing. Brandon, for me, it's very close. It's very close. Yeah, it's not, it's not, a, we need a midfielder, the striker, we can leave that. It's it's, it's, it's not a, the most important thing for me. It's very close for me. All I think is that helping us with the build-up, helping us with the defensive work, helping going back, we need that left eight, and that's what I hold important. But I definitely understand the arguments. I'm not saying that we don't need a striker. I I see the arguments yeah. that we need a striker, and we get we're screaming yeah. for it as well. So that's right, mate. No problem, Matt. How do you see this? Because obviously today, I, look again. I I see it as a neutral. I thought overall, I thought you did really well today. But when it comes to improving, do you think it's a striker or the midfield that you need to spend that money on in January? Um. Well, obviously, a striker is uh, one of the options. But I personally do think it's that left eight because we don't have a natural left eight. We don't. And it kind of frustrates me because at pre-season, we originally thought that um, Emil Smith-Rowe was uh, going to be that left eight because that's what he was been training in. Um, he was being coached in that pretty much all year from his injury that he had last year. And... He's not really come into the team as that left eight. So I'm actually quite frustrated in that we don't have a natural left eight. Um, there's kind of two positions, I think, which is the left eight and the striker that we need to buy in January. And in terms of the striker market, Tony's valued at about 80 million. We just don't have that money to just splash out in uh, January. And a left eight, I think we'll probably get that in the uh, summer. But, yeah. I hear, I hear you want. I, I hear Sorry, you want. Tal, Can I just interject real quick? I find this absolutely like I, I can't believe what people are saying here. They're talking about the left eight. Granite Xhaka was never a natural left eight. Granite Xhaka did a job, and the, Kai Havertz yeah, is doing this. And he Kai was short Havertz. term. He was short yeah, term. Though. short term. But Kai Havertz is doing a similar role now with different attributes. Obviously. You know, we've got the long ball, so he can he can uh, hold the ball up. He's he's pretty decent in the air, and he helps us uh, win the ball high up the pitch by doing that. And now that like I was never for the Kai Havertz signing, but now that he's starting to come into form, do you not think like a striker is more of a priority than Kai Havertz, who currently at the moment is performing in that left eight role and doing just as good as what Granite Xhaka did do? Last season, he scored four goals and and, and created an, uh, one assist in, in the Premier League so far this season, Kai Havertz. It, it can only get better, surely. You know, we're not playing Liverpool Anfield week in, week out. And I thought he, he did really well today. So yeah, yeah. I look at it and I think striker is priority. Because like, like Saad was pointing out earlier, there were so many occasions today where the ball was coming in the box and nobody was making that run. Nobody. That's where we need the striker. Jesus is... It, you know, he wants to drop deep. He wants to bring others into play. We need that striker who's, who's going to be there in the box when the ball comes in from Bukayo Saka to finish the chances off. And that's that's the most frustrating for me uh, thing for me as an Arsenal fan. We create so much, but we just don't finish our dinner. Mm. So you what know? striker would you buy then in January or in the summer? I'd take Ivan Tony. I'd take Ivan Tony because he can do the similar things to what Jesus does, but he also... As a natural stri like a natural number nine, a natural striker, knows where to be in the box as well and when to get in there. He's tall, he's physical. I think he's got all the right attributes to be a, a striker for Arsenal. So who would you go for if we can't get Ivan Tony? Because at the moment it's about 50-50, I think, that we probably yeah. get. Well, obviously, you know, you you, you don't wanna you don't wanna go too far down the list because you know, you don't want to end up bringing in somebody who just who just doesn't suit the role and there, there is only a handful of players out there but it's up to Arsenal to go out there and do it at the yeah. end of the day right yeah. the, the the biggest frustration for me with Arsenal last season we were top of the league at Christmas we had an opportunity to go out in January 
do the business to get us over the line. And we brought in Jorginho, we brought in Trossard, but it, it simply wasn't enough. This time around, we need to identify what we need. And if it costs us £80 million or £100 million, and it means we're not going to get a player in the summer, but it means we're going to win the league this season, go and do it. Go and do it. I think you guys definitely should. We're going to come back to Arsenal in a minute. We've got super chats to do. Sam, from your point of view as a Liverpool fan, Mo Salah today stepped up again when needed. And I thought, you know, he did the finger to the ear. He has heard what people have been saying all week. He's finished. Should he be sold? There's been Arsenal fans writing him up as well. Mo Salah stepped up again for you today and scored an absolute banger. To be fair, I, I I was a little bit confused when Arsenal fans were trying to write off Salah when they got Zinchenko at left back. That don't make no sense. <laughs> it don't make no sense. I mean, the ball from Trent was world class. Oh yeah, that ball was brilliant. And then the touch. And to be fair, I was I was looking at my screen. I'm thinking Salah, take him on, take him on, take him on, just take him on, just take him on, just take him on. And Zinchenko just let him just go on his left. And he absolutely smacked it near post. Yeah, because he can't like, defend. He can't defend. That, uh, t- t- to be fair, it's, it's kind of like, we our attack has struggled in recent weeks, but Salah, he's he's inevitable. He's, he's going to get a goal in these big games. He's, he's, he's just going to get a goal in these big games. There's there's not really <laughs> any stopping Mo Salah. I mean, when we're talking about our front three, I don't... <laughs> Diaz and what's his name? Um, Gapo weren't good today. They weren't good. And the reason with Diaz, and I think he's lost a lot of confidence, he can't beat his man. As soon as Nunes came on and went on the left wing, boom, he was giving um, Ben White trouble. I think, I, think, up- I, Sam, I think Klopp made a mistake today. After Darwin on the left, he's, he should have started with Darwin on the left. Exactly. 110%. Because he's a nuisance out there. And Luis Diaz, is, he has lost confidence, but he's just been found out. I think he's mm. he's got one or two tricks, and the tacticians and coaches that close watch it and go, well, if you if you put him on this foot or you or you get close to him in this way, it nullifies him. And something's happened where he just doesn't look like the player. I know he's had injuries as well. To be fair, yeah. the fact Klopp didn't start Darwin today, I thought gave Arsenal such an advantage. I, I remember, felt. remember what I said last stream when I said to Ram, what were we saying about Lu, Lu, um, Nunes left wing, Diaz up top. And I know Ram wasn't trying to hear it, but this is exactly what I was talking about. Because remember when we beat you um, 7-0? Who was left wing? It was Nunes. He he causes teams trouble. Yes, technically, he's he might not be that good. But because of his pace, his pace is always a threat. All he just has to do is kick and run. He's always he's he's already um, causing trouble. One more thing I need to say. There's been a lot said in the beginning of the season about our defence. Our defence was brilliant today. Our defence was brilliant today. Van Dijk, just normal Van Dijk. And Konate was a beast. Konate was a beast today. And even Trent, I, I don't, uh, to be fair, they were doubling up on Martinelli, but even Trent was, was okay defensively as well. Mm. And um, Gomez, when he came on, he was he was good. So, like, I've always said this, is like, people really went in on our defence and I said, our defence ain't that bad. Our defence ain't that bad. Even Endo, Endo, for what he is, he had a good game. He had a very good game, Endo. So, the problem with me, and the, I come into January, I still will say this, we need a DM and we need a centre-back. because Not because our centre-backs are not great. I just don't trust Konate and um, Joe Gomez's injury record. So, we need another centre-back. A DM is kind of a must because if... Endo goes down, then we don't really have anybody. But I'm really thinking about and looking at our forward line. We might need somebody else because when Salah goes on Afcon in January, it might look be a little bit tetchy. If, hold up a and, minute. Hold up a minute. You've got Gapo, um, Salah, Nunez, yeah. Diaz. Who else have you got? Is it? Is that literally yeah, it? can I ask you a question though, Matt? Let me let me throw this let me throw this to you, yeah. Matt. Let me throw this to you about that. Yeah. If I have a Ford Fiesta, a BMW uh three series, an Audi TT, and a Ford Mustang, how many cars do I have? Four or five. Sorry, um oh. I won't exactly listen. If, sorry. if none of them work, how many cars do I actually have 
in reality. Yeah. How many cars yeah. can actually drive? Zero. So Liverpool have got a lot of people, but they don't deliver enough. And if they, none of them step up when Mo Salah leaves, it doesn't matter how many you've got. There's no engine in them. Do you know what I mean? There's no steering wheel. They're none in void. Sorry to I, jump I like, in. But that's, I, I like, like that analogy, people. tell, bro. That, that, one, that one, more thing. Was... one more thing before I have to, I have to go. <laughs> Liverpool really missed Jota. Really missed Jota. Now, I have been getting on to Jota about when in, in with our style of play, he doesn't really do much. But one thing about Jota, he gets goals and assists. One thing about Jota, he's our second most natural finisher in the team. Even up against Arsenal previous seasons. How many goals has Jota scored against Arsenal in previous seasons? It's we nightmare. really, we, we really can't, miss We Jota. can't start going down the missing players route, man. We're both no, missing. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, look, listen, this is not why we, we drew the game or anything. I'm just saying for previous games, the the nil nil against um Man United the, the um, other games where our attack has struggled um struggled, we have missed Jota. This why, is why do you think you drew today? I think we missed our chances. Yeah, Trent bottled it. Yeah, no, no, no Trent, anyway. Trent did, Trent did, and um, and literally we should have won the game. I believe we should have won the game. Yeah. On the, on the balance, we see at the Emirates though, man. No, no, we'll beat you at the Emirates. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> say on the um, on the Trent I'll, six one. Hey, it was a bit of a slight bobble, to be fair. Like, I don't know what was up with your pitch, but my God, it was an absolute shocking sort of quality. It was genuinely terrible. Like, that bobbles, and then obviously um, up the other end, our players were slipping. The the pitch was horrendous. I don't know who, who your groundsman is, but he I'm, was... I'm sorry, I, that oh. cannot be an excuse for me. <laughs> that cannot no, be an no, excuse no, for me. No, no, no. Of course. Of course. So, so, I mean, Jay called it out. You, you said Trent bottled that. He bowled it, man. Chance fell to him in the box, hits the crossbar from about five yards out and keeps Arsenal in the game and Liverpool don't go on to win. But for me, a couple of Arsenal players bowled it as well, man. I feel like... I was going to say that. Do you have to speak on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, let, let, me, let, me, let me do my Arsenal analysis. So, based on the game, I feel like Zinchenko, Martinelli, a couple of them had games to forget. And a few of the other players had a few sloppy moments, nothing too concerning. Just a couple of times he gave the ball away, then it made a struggle to get that control of the game. But apart from that, it's happy days, man. No one really goes to Anfield and win. You're not going to see many teams go there and win. City could drop points there. We're top of the league. Literally what we were going into this weekend, hoping to be top of the league at Christmas. It's happened, so can't overanalyze it too much. For I'm really interested do, when and Timber the only comes comment, wait, sorry, let me just finish. But the sorry. only thing that I am a bit not concerned on, but I want to see the front four step up a little bit more. Like you know, we praise Saka, Martinelli, all the guard. We played, we praise these guys highly. Some of it's these games where they're gonna have to show like, yo, like I'm world class, and then that's when it's like cool. But there's a couple of these difficult games that I'm yet to see us um turn over away from home. Mm. But at the Emirates will be a different game. Um, but we're top man. Can't be criticizing, analyzing, talking about well, what well, this in general. Let me give my question to you all. I want to go souls first on this. You are top. You're clear of City by six points. You were still the favorite, so I think it's significant. One point ahead of Liverpool. I know there's things to criticize your team on, but overall, are you satisfied as you reach, we basically reached the midway point of the season? No. I mean, look, people can be happy with the draw at Anfield. I'm simply not happy with the performance. Now, the reason why I say that is this is a continuous pattern the entire season. A lot of people have been getting on to me for being quote-unquote negative this season, despite how we're performing. We've seen this last season, the same story, six points, eight points, ten points. We're actually 11 points ahead of City at one point. And guess who won the fucking league? City did. <laughs> Again, same pattern we're going into. We don't know what we're going to do in January. Now it went from we're looking to solidify Ivan Tony as a signing to, oh, it's going to be 50-50. Oh, we'll see. Oh, Chelsea are coming to the equation. Okay, we'll back away again. So my problem is we're seeing the same patterns that we've seen that cost us the league last season. Now, this is why I, I always say, and I will continuously say it, we don't have a single world-class player, maybe at the cusp of world-class, maybe good level players, but we don't have a world-class player. What is it going to take, right, to turn this team into killers? Do they need to get their mums cussed out or something? Like, Because these guys are too soft, they're too nice. They'll get their goal and start playing like donkeys. What is going on with this team? We need to have a ruthless mentality. We've got two killers right up our backside wanting to win this, this league. 
Man City are not going to be like, oh, do you know what? Arsenal ain't won it for 20 years. Let's just let them win it. No, Liverpool aren't going to be the same. We are too nice. We, we, we back off as soon as we scored. We backed off. We don't have that intention of beating a team 6-0, letting them cry, let them suffer. Let them suffer a loss. We just don't want to kill teams off. And I know people are going to bring Bournemouth into it. We beat them 4-1 or whatever. But it doesn't happen consistently. And I've been saying it. I don't care what the stats say. I don't care what anyone else says. We create enough chances, right, to put burying these games. And I know people are going to say, but we're 11th in the chances created. I don't care. We created more than enough chances. The, the table's probably going to say we created like three or four. But in my opinion, I can tell you about 10, 11 chances we created. Havertz, Martinelli. Do you know the problem with today that I found that, that disappointed me is the greediness and the selfishness of this team. There were no patterns of play. There were no like sort of integrate passes where we're like breaking these teams down. We're controlling the game. We're like, we're one nil up. We don't need to play rock and roll football. We don't need to go toe to toe with Liverpool anymore. Let's just be smart. Let's kill the game. Let's kill the momentum of this game. They're attacking the hell out of us and we're taking no sting out of the game. So these are the things why I think we're not quite there yet to win the league because we're still immature in our decision-making. We're still childish in the way we play. And this is the first time I was like, why is Arteta not animated on the touchline telling his team to calm down? He went and sat down looking clueless. It's the first time I've seen that. What's that? Because he knows it will get booked. Don't give a shit. Get a red card. Who cares? This yeah, but is then he misses big... like three games. Good for him. Who cares? We don't have anything more important than being the likes of Liverpool at Anfield, being the likes of Man City at Etihad. They're the biggest games that are going to turn a corner. So for me, do what you need to do. But I just don't think we had the me- like the maturity to win this game. And that's what's for me. I could come back and be wrong. I want to be wrong. I want to win the league. But I think the maturity of this team is why we won't win it. So, so I personally think if Aston Villa won last night it will be a different mentality heading into this game because why if, because if they won who the hell cares what other teams if, have done? No, well, no, no, no. because if we drew the game which we did we wouldn't be top of the league and i think that played a big part in um Aston Villa, um had a draw and if we drew we'd still be top of the league who cares? That's why I think the mentality. Who cares? Of, why are we looking at Aston Villa? Right. Who the fuck cares? That's exactly what I'm talking about. We've got the shittest mentality. Then that's that is actually alarming. If that's the mentality we're going in, oh Aston Villa drew, so all we need to do is draw to stay on top of the league. No, why the hell are we going into any game like that? We should be going into every game thinking we don't really care what's happened. All those other teams, right, can do what they want, but we need to go. Can, We've got an objective. Can I ask you a question, thing. though? To play devil's advocate on this, I, I know I've seen my team do it when we were in title races. I've seen Pep's teams do it. I've seen Klopp's teams do it, where in certain games, so away at your biggest rivals for titles, there comes to a point in the game, maybe the last 15 minutes, where teams go, we can get a chance to win, we will, but we're not going to we're not going to push too hard in case we lose because a point is better than nothing away from home against your top rivals. I know that, and I, we've heard the elite level manager talk about that mentality. Why is that unacceptable for Arsenal if it's been acceptable for world-class managers and Premier League winners in the past, in your opinion, Souls? It's not It's not about it being acceptable or not acceptable for certain managers and for others. For me, it's the mentality of looking at what, because that's what cost us last season. We heard in the dressing room, we are looking at what Man City have done, what their results are, and then we go into games prepared that way. This is this is the stage where you've got to take advantage of those situations, not match results. We're not the team that are bona fide favourites to winning it. Man City doing something is different to us doing it. We need to be nearly perfect to win this league because we know there's a lack of quality in certain areas. We do have not really the experience to win the league. So we need to give ourselves the best opportunity. And for me, I think this is the perfect opportunity to beat a Liverpool. And we shouldn't be looking at the likes of Aston. Firstly, Aston Villa, it doesn't matter what Aston Villa do. Because in my humble opinion, I don't think they're in the title race. I might be wrong. They might actually finish within three points of the league. But in my opinion, it's between three teams, Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal. So who cares what Aston Villa did? This is the, this is the point, right, where you can make a statement there has to be so uh, in in this season there has to be a statement win that goes and shows this is why we're going to win the league and i don't think we've done that yet fair, fair dudes we're going to get some of these super chats here from our viewers uh this here says whoever's saying odegaard doesn't do doesn't do it intentionally needs an eye test liverpool was the better today in every 
uh, aspect. Terry, you know that. I wouldn't say Liverpool are better in every aspect. I, I think that both teams defended. I mean, I haven't looked at the stats, but I just feel like they're relatively similar. I didn't look at any stats during the game. I was watching the game with my brother. I, I did eye test data. I didn't look at any stats. Possession 50-50. Look at that. Got 13. This is how you know your eye test good. I swear on my children's life. I looked at a single stat. 51% possession to Liverpool, 49. 13 shots each. Let's see shots on target. Three for Liverpool, two for Arsenal. Both had six off target. Uh, four shots blocked for Liverpool, five shots blocked for Arsenal. It was so even. Even when you go to look at the player ratings on this website, uh, the average rating of Liverpool was 6.66. The average rating for Arsenal was 6.63. So you could argue Liverpool were marginally better, but it was at Anfield. So... If your eye test works, you knew that game was so even, in my opinion, Curran. And there we go. Um, how many times did players slip on the pitch? I didn't really notice it that much. But then it's not my team, so maybe I'm not focusing in that way. Uh, if Even the ref the Lions had a slip. Yeah. <laughs> and he never if, if the ref isn't going to protect Saka, he'll just have to take out your fullback. A good game overall from two top teams. Respect to Liverpool. Come on, you Gooners. It was two very good teams. Uh, City fans showing up, trying to get be involved in a title race this season. Bring on KDB. We are no longer scared. Come on, you Gooners. Well, I like the chest there. I mean, City are involved in a title race, am I, bro? Uh, both had 50% possession and both had 13 shots. There we go. I didn't know. There we go. Fair. Uh, even Saliba said in an interview it was a penalty. Interesting. I'll have to go and watch that, but interesting. Uh, Odegaard dribbled the bo- the football like LeBron. Decent form, to be honest. Havart's pu- uh, push was a penalty as well, in my opinion, is what Nate says. This here from Low Keys, an Arsenal fan says, Saka, Martinelli and Odegaard are not world-class. Do you both agree with that? Yeah, um, I don't think they are. Saka is probably the closest, but yeah, I agree with that. It's interesting this, this season how... Just the the levels slightly dropped, and I'm intrigued to see how much better it's going to get. Um, I think Odegaard slipped, but he was on his way down purposely. Uh, put his uh puts his ball hand to ball uh, because he knew the slip would save him. Shouldn't have won despite that. Should have won despite that though is what Mohamedou says here. I think he's a Liverpool fan, of course. Uh, Fartanelli not even better than Jackson. Let's not be silly. Uh, Odegaard's hand wasn't there. He wouldn't have. It's, he would have. Wouldn't be a professional footballer due to only having having one arm. He would have face planted on the floor. And the guy's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's not. Yeah, wrong. That's actually quite funny. Uh, thank you, Pete, for that super chat. Uh, in my eyes, it's a penalty. But like two weeks ago, the rule says defender accidentally handballed is not a penalty. Good game overall. Definitely was a good game. Couldn't can't deny that. Um, Arsenal played well. Liverpool should have gotten the penalty. Same as Romero's handball against Arsenal this season. Um, all um, are Arsenal fans really ready to speak about their game management is is just driving and wasting time. Yeah, I mean, no. it wasn't the same no. as the Romero pen because he he handballed it when the ball was going into the goal. <laughs> that is not the same. Uh, I, I, I think about the diving and time wasting. <laughs> Bro, listen, that's going to be in every team. Every yeah. team, realistically, time waste. If, if, we're, if we're looking at it objectively, every team is going to time waste. But listen, the, the game management, that's that's probably where Arteta needs to learn a bit more, when to bring players on, how long to take with his substitutions. But listen, uh, he's, he's still a new manager. Four years into the job, man. Four years as a professional manager. Terry, can we also talk about how Liverpool got two yellow cards and we got five? And we had the same amount of fouls as well. Like, look, I I think what's I mean, a lot of Liverpool fans are stating that Saka should have gone. Um, I I don't think so. I think he slipped. I I think it would have been very. I remember when. uh, Shoulder barge or something. Yeah, but I remember, yeah, when he slipped. I remember when Ander Herrera got a second yellow for doing that years ago. So, again, I'm not going to be hypocrite by coming out and saying somebody else should be sent off that way. I did think for the, the fact that the referee was asked whether he'd been drinking alcohol because of a decision to not be booked for that when at the same ground last week, the low got sent off literally for two. I think that was a little bit harsh yeah. that he didn't get one there. But I, I didn't think the referee barring that penalty, I didn't think he had a bad game overall. I think he let the game flow in the right places. Where I always find weird is sometimes, though, 
he'll give a foul for someone pulling someone down. And then there was a time where Eddie and Ketty, I think it was, was pulled down. And he just went, I don't get it. There was a little bit of that, I suppose. Uh, Odegaard didn't create one clear-cut chance. Um, did he not today? I mean, he uh, mostly passed the ball to the wingers. and then He, he was uh, helping with the build-up. He was helping with yeah. the build-up. Yeah, yeah. I, Somebody I thought who was, helps I with the... He had a very good game, though, I thought. He, he might have been He might have been the... Cre- Actually, no, he, he did He did have an assist, though. He did have an assist for the free kick. Oh, yeah, for the free kick. He, he, there we go. He done a free kick, so that was a chance. Uh, Manny here says, piss-poor performance individually from Martinelli, Saka, and Zinni, uh, but a good enough performance um, at Anfield. Getting pocketed by Gomez is embarrassing, I can't lie. Give me Tony um, and um, an eight in January at all costs. What was interesting is Saka, I thought Saka had Simakas on toast. And... Yeah, I didn't think he had a bad game at all. And, like, but then go, go, the category of Martinelli. This is, it, sometimes Gomez came on and did brilliantly. And I think I understand we all view one of the reasons why I love doing what I do on the football terrace and I talk about other people's teams is you're, you're not looking for it. Everyone looks at their club in a biased way. Mm. Ironically, the most predictions I get wrong is about my own club. And it's because I think we all have rose tinted glasses or crazy standards for our own club. It's very hard to be balanced sometimes with your own team. Gomez just came on and was brilliant. And now Gomez having a brilliant game isn't per se embarrassing for Saka because Gomez is a good player. He just came on and was immense and nearly, by the way, scored a cracker of a winner as well. So for me... I think you've got to praise the quality of Gomez as opposed to slamming Saka, in my opinion. The only thing, the only thing I'll say about that as well, yeah, is that for Gomez, it's kind of easier for him to mark Saka because Saka preferably goes on his left. He is right-footed, mm-hmm. so it's it's easier for him to to mark Saka in that way and push him onto his to his weaker foot, which is his right foot. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I agree with you, um, Terry. I'm not I'm not afraid to, to invite a lot of people. Ask where the Liverpool fans, all the the links were put into the group chats and shared by KJ. All the Liverpool fans you normally have on our shows have all got the link. I don't know where they are. It is also a couple of days before Christmas, so I do think people are a little bit busy. Uh, Premier League goals this season, Saka 5, Martinelli 2, Jackson 7. Can we have a conversation, please? I mean, Jimmy, if you think that Nicholas Jackson is better, just say it. I think the conversation is this. Both Saka and Martinelli have not been anywhere near their best. Everybody knows that. But would I, if someone said to me now, you can sign Shaka, you, you offer me those three in numerical order from best to worst. I'm picking Saka followed by Martinelli followed by Nicholas, Nico Jackson. And I think if every Chelsea fan in the world said you could swap Saka for Jackson today, I think every single Chelsea fan on God's green earth would agree with it. But even That's tell Jackson it, should have about it, 12 Premier League goals in that case because he's missed about five six big chances yeah. bro, this guy's had this guy's had freaking open shots bro every single one of his goals have been an open <laughs> shot put them over the <laughs> what do you want me to do uh, this here says cannot believe what i'm hearing about needing a left eight and avoiding the need for a striker uh geez you guys are insane uh think harder will you is what steven says you just you two basically <laughs> i don't know like, i mean i think we need both personally but a striker would be ahead of a left eight, but I still think we need both. Mm. And Sharim here says Darwin was crap as well. Attack is not good enough. I don't think he was amazing when he came on. You're right. But I do believe that if he started the game, he could have caused more problems because Diaz was invisible. Uh, we didn't produce uh, anything apart from Gabriel's goal. Liverpool drew against Rice. But this is the thing. There was the overload chance they had. This was Arsenal's problem tonight. It was that final ball. So you didn't have opp- ch- chances, but you had opportunities in the game. And for me, that's what went wrong tonight. But both teams kind of stopped each other. The defending was great. And I think that you can't just say we attacked poorly when the when you, when Canate today, when Gomez today, when Trent today were immense as well. I, 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 Credit has to go to them as well. Uh, Zinchenko got left one-on-one against the best right winger in the world. Why didn't Gabriel get closer to help him the way Canate helped? For the goal, I'll tell you why. Because that ball that was played was hit so early and so accurately, it, it made it hard. And if the defender then steps out of his position when the team isn't set, you're going to leave massive holes. That was the difference. A lot of the time when you guys attacked and got up the other end, you'd done it through passages of play, which meant the Liverpool team had got themselves back into shape and were compact. It meant a centre-back can step over because Endo or another midfielder had stepped back into a centre-back role. You can't sometimes do that when it's a quick well-timed long ball that opens the team up and breaks all those lines. That's why, in my opinion. 
Uh, why was the pit so slippery today? So many times players slipped. Listen, studs, bro. Studs. <laughs> Wrong studs. It's going to happen, bro. Everybody's Wrong complaining studs. about these pitches, bro. It's going to happen, bro. My it bro here, really AMT, easy. says, get a striker, put Jesus on the left, sacrifice Martinelli. No. I mean, when, I, when you say sacrifice him, you don't no. mean sell him, do you? You mean just bench yeah. him. I think he's what he means. Gabriel Martinelli had 15 goals last season. Like, I think people are forgetting that. He's just not at his peak okay. form that he do you was. Know what, do you know what happens? What happens is this. Gareth Bale went through this. You go through these peaks and troughs when you're a young player. Because what happens is the coaches watch you and go, okay, well, these are the five things he's brilliant at. These are his two or three weaknesses. So they set up tactics to force a player towards his weaknesses. It then becomes about that player developing a way to circumvent that. And the world-class players, get they work out ways. I remember the whole of Ronaldo's career at United. Every time he started doing well, somebody would start, to, players would start to nullify him. And then it was his job to work through that. And that's part of your progression. That's all that I think Martinelli is kind of going through is he's got to work new ways. Because both him and Saka at times this year, now I'm not comparing them to Anthony and to Garnacho and Rashford because they're better than them this year, no, without a shadow. But they make, too often do I see them both come inside and just try and whack it with their, with, their, with their strongest foot. And it's like, you've got to work on more than that to progress to that next level now because people have worked that out. You've got to go more on the outside, I think. Maybe release the ball a little bit quicker. And that takes time. They're young. Uh, putting all the water on the pitch only for Trent to scuff his shot in that five versus one situation. <laughs> Karma is great. <laughs> These conspiracy theories are crazy, bro. <laughs> Oh, uh, Klopp just confirmed that Costa broke his collarbone, so we don't have a left back now. And Canate turned Jesus uh, back to wine. Uh, what turned wine back to water? Uh, up the Reds. I like that honestly. That's a good one. Oh, I get that because of our uh, Jesus chant uh, about yeah. Uh, but, oh, you guys got a chant about that. This is yeah, 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 an yeah. Arsenal fan. I have no he idea about this chant. Water into wine and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was not yeah I, I suppose that's in rest in in in, uh, in, in reference to old. What's his face from Nazareth? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's we got a birthday. Birthday in a couple of days. Uh, old, uh, my lord. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> lad in the green hat. He's obviously gone now. Uh, you are Lee, are you Lee Gunner in disguise? Uh, point to Anfield is a solid result. And they did not uh, effing out play us at all. If they want to allow the, the, the standard argument is interesting because if your standard is we have to outplay Liverpool at Anfield when they're in a title race and brilliant, and win, and if we don't, I'm going to be angry, then your standards are a madness. Because Pep don't have those standards. Pep don't have the standards you, to, go to, <laughs> to do if that. You get, if you get a point if you get a point at the Anfield and at the Etihad, then you're sorted because you you, yeah. you got to rely on the home games. I, I, I take yeah. my chances against I, I agree. Now, there. of course, Pep wants to win and sets up to win like you did, but Pep ain't going to leave with a draw at Anfield and goes, you know what? We're a crap team because we couldn't win it. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, uh, I accept a to demolish every so I expect to demolish every team every week uh, is a useless argument is what Steven says uh, need a statement win to prove you can beat City you mean like the time we beat City laughing my ass off stop waffling I think he means beat City to the title as opposed to beating City in a game to be fair uh, uh, question uh, Terry Trent got a yellow for a push versus Newcastle but Saka uh, didn't that's what I don't understand it's about cynicalness, though. And we all know that at times referees don't give yellows when players are already on yellows. They, they, they move the bar up and it is inconsistent. You're right. This statement win thing is nonsense. We beat City and then nearly lost to Chelsea the following week. Points are gained against weaker sides. Thank you, Nico. Uh, Don wouldn't trade uh, Nico for Saka or Martinelli, to be fair. Remember, he said he wouldn't trade um, Mudu for Martinelli. <laughs> that stinks. I don't believe him. I don't believe him. Uh, Saliba, Gabriel, or VVD and Konate, who are you taking at Man United? I'm going to say Saliba and Gabriel, but I'll tell you why, before anyone goes, secret Arsenal fan, just because Van Dyke's age. If Van Dyke was four or five years younger, then I'd take them too. But because of Saliba and Gabriel's age, you're going to get longer out of it. So there's logic to it. But Terry, you're going to get clipped up now. Let them. Let them. Uh, Mart uh, Martinelli scored most of his goals in the second half of the season. This is true. Bring a top striker who then who is benched. Probably Martinelli right now. <laughs> uh, if you bring a top striker, it's probably it's actually probably going to be in who's going to get sold. They put him on a the market. 
Yeah. So they, they've said that they're willing to take 40 million to 45 mil bids. I think Good if price, Tony, man. I think if we buy Tony in January, I think Eddie and Katia goes to Brentford or he goes. Yeah, that could happen. It's amazing how so called world class players can only use one foot. Saka always cuts in and won't use his right. No. It's becoming predictable. No, no, no. I've seen him so many times score goals with his right foot, ping balls. Uh, two of the balls that he pinged across the, across the box, which were clean balls that that would have if you had anybody at the back post it's easy touch into the goal both of them with his right foot so please don't tell me no ben White is his partnership <laughs> and he's not been on form either so i think that does kind of play because last season saka was cutting in he was going to the byline he was overlapping with uh ben white mm. they were absolutely brilliant as a partnership and that's yeah. why i want that for england so i hear you uh, Married on the Morons back in the Terry. You said Martinez is better than Gabriel. So, what are you saying mm. now? What so are you get... saying now, Tell? What <laughs> are you saying? Very easy. But the question wasn't who would you pick to pair with Martinez? It was which of the two centre back pairings would you take? So, I answered the question. Idealistically, right now, I would, if I had all the options, I'd take Saliba from Arsenal and pair him with Martinez. So, that is what I'm saying now, my friend. With a new manager at Man United, by the way, not the one we've currently, currently got. I <laughs> uh, didn't answer my question who is benched? Um, I, I, if I was Arsenal and you went and got Tony, I'd be putting Jesus onto the onto the left, and I'd be benching Martinelli. I would probably sell Winketia to raise the money if you need to. That is what I would do, boys. I want to thank you all. Uh, Terry doesn't rate Saliba. It's so, clear. what do you mean I don't rate Saliba? Well, I just I literally picked him, right? And then what are you talking about? Don't you listen, Mohammed Ahmed? Oh, is, is there wax in your ears? You need to go to your local Turkish barbers and get the old... You're not going to get the wax done in your ears, brother. you got to go get that done, my G. I just had that done for Christmas. Nose feels a bit set tensive after that, but get it done. Listen, end of the show now, because I'm going to go spend some time with the family, because it's Christmas time here in Blighty. Do us a big favour and hit the like button. Please subscribe to the Football Terrace as well. We're back tomorrow with more content, including the match reaction. My first ever time working Christmas Eve. Can't believe it, but I'm working. I'm there for you, man tomorrow for the Chelsea Wolves game. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon.